Hello, my doting mothers. Oh, it's good to be back with you. Are you ready to begin this presentation? Good, so am I. The long-term repercussions of spanking a young child. Mothers, spare the rod. In this discussion, we will review the significant relationship between a mother and her offspring and the devastating effects of spanking and other negative and degrading behaviors, all which can prevent an offspring from ever developing to his or her intellectual abilities. And for this presentation, we will analyze only the first three years of development. These are the most crucial years of development in a person's life. The first three years of growth are divided into a newborn, which is from birth through two months. And from two months through 12 months is an infant. And from 12 months through 36 months is a toddler. And we pick up a child's a stage of development at 36 months. In this presentation, I will use the term child or baby interchangeably. And I'll do this with the mother and a caretaker. But first, mothers, I must ask you a most searching probe, and that is this. How many of you, mothers, might have had someone that consistently screamed or even threatened you physically? How did this degrading behavior make you feel about your self-worth? I thought so. Of course, sooner or later, you as an adult, will remove yourself from this toxic environment. But a young child will have to endure this unhealthy environment. A child just can't pack their bags and move to a better uh, state of environment. And thus a child might suffer the effects of this trauma for a lifetime. And mothers, let me buttress what I'm trying to uh, get across uh, that is about hitting and screaming and uh, doing other negative things. Say you wanted to wallpaper your bathroom. It shouldn't be that taxing for you. So you give it a try. But when your significant other comes home, you just can't wait to show off what you've done. But you're not rewarded with praise. Instead, you were screamed at and told that you have made a mess and indirectly call you stupid for even attempting to do this. But you had confidence that you could accomplish such a task. So you went and got some videos on how to wallpaper a room. But this time, your significant other came back and they threatened you and say you're wasting money. How did this make you feel? Well, I can surmise that you never tried to wallpaper a room ever again. However, this negative behavior isn't that devastating to you as it would be to a young child because you know that you are intelligent in other avenues and you can just sort of put this away in the back folders of your brain. However, a young child will remember this most likely forever, because it was so degrading. They wanted to try something and nobody praised them. And mothers, let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered why some people have exceptional intelligence? And perhaps you might have surmised this. Well, their exceptional intelligence and success must be correlated with genetics or Perhaps certain races of people are just more smarter. Well, child psychologists would comfortably disagree with you and postulate this statement. People do not come into this world with more intelligence than others. And genetics contribute little to someone having premium intelligence. Rather, this valuable intelligence that a person gains comes directly by the way of a doting mother it will be her interventions at crucial stages of growth. And this mother knowing what procedures and techniques that are so significant and when to apply them during that critical three years of development. 
The foundation for learning starts from birth through three years of age. But how does a young child learn as much information and why? Well, we know at this time of development, from birth through three years, the brain is wired differently than any other time in one's life. The brain of a young child is designed to take in a wealth of knowledge and thus give them their intelligence. Simply put, a young child will learn more overwhelming information knowledge that will last a lifetime. Never will we learn as much information and learn it faster than we'll ever realize again in our life, no matter what your IQ is. And let me say that I believe it has to do with nature. Now this is anecdotal. I just think nature probably forces them to, to, to take in information for survival. So how do a young child acquire so much intelligence, so much knowledge by the age of three years? Well, an offspring learns by seeking answers to questions that they feel are important to them. First, they point. Later, they'll start talking, using verbal things to say, what is that? Why is that then? Young children learn by having scheduled playtimes. This way, a child will have the freedom to succeed and also to fail and to learn from failing and to keep trying. But a mother should never hit when they fail or make a mess. And a child will go through experimenting of different things to test their thesis about something. How does it work? Why does it work? And this time of being alone for a child will varnish confidence. I can do it. I know I can. And just as importantly, a child will learn their way of solving a problem. You know, a method that will help them to accomplish a task later on in life. I did it my way. And you know, ideas are born the first three years of development and playing alone. A young child will follow this information, the tricks and trade of solving a problem into the folders of the brain where they will remain there for a lifetime and will be used as an adult when needed. None of what I'm saying would be possible if a mother did not realize what applications and procedures to embellish at various stages of development. Now, I'm going to repeat myself there. Thus, this is to say a mother gives her offspring his or her intelligence that will last a lifetime because they'll learn the tricks and trades. And this makes sense. The mother spends more quality time with her offspring. But what effects, if any, do the behavior of spanking, hitting, screaming, uh, frowning, slamming things to the floor in disgust in the presence of a young child, what does all this have to do with gaining intelligence? There's so much compelling evidence to substantiate this. If a young child is consistently spanked, hit, or any type of physically, a physical abuse done to them, well, guess what? That child will squander 15 quality IQ points, considering that 100 IQ points is average. And let me go further with explaining that. Let me say this to you mothers. Suppose your child is attempting to do something, making a mess. You hit them on the hand, not hard. They're going to stop if you consistently do it. They won't ask to learn. Again, how do they learn? By asking things, talking, talking, and you talking to them. Well, they're going to stop doing this. No one wants to be hit on. So thus, the IQ is not developed and it will last a lifetime. We don't know why, but that's the way the brain is. And during those three years, it's, I can't do it. I have no confidence. I'm stupid, so to speak. And there's something strange about being hit, 
even if it's a tap on the hands, it is emotionally devastating to a child or to anyone to be screamed at. Such says so many negative connotation about the child receiving this type of negative behavior. Now, this goes back to how we, uh, we have already described how someone gained knowledge. The offspring's uh, confidence in being able to succeed is squashed because you are hitting on them. You're screaming at them. You're frowning at them. They will not retain the ability to want to do something. It's just squandered. You know, if mothers that you feel that you have to tap, well, do it, but go back five minutes later and hold them and hug them. In most cases, the fear of failing and being severely reprimanded will always linger. I, I don't want to do this. My mother may spank me. I don't know what to do. I'll just remain mute. Why would a child even attempt to communicate with a mother? Well, it might get screamed at or hit. And this IQ will suffer not being elevated to the degree it should be. And here's another reason a mother should not use physical, um, uh, emotional, um, degrading behaviors. Sociologists have validated that people who are physically abusive were themselves victims, perhaps at a young age, of having the same type of behavior done to them. And you know what else? They're going to do this in society and for generations to come. They'll just pass it on. This is the way to do it. You whip somebody if they don't understand or listen to you. Okay, mothers, you've been waiting to express your viewpoints concerning spanking and hitting from a mother or from a parent. And you'll say, what's the big deal? I have you know I remember being hit and spanked when I was growing up and I turned out okay. Well, you know, I can say this. Why do you remember being spanked in the first place? And by the way, there are plenty of people who smoke and don't get cancer. So what? But I must ask you, why do you remember those whippings? Think, just think a second. Okay. And I got to ask you, at what age did those spanking and whippings occur? Now, if you were in, uh, a preteen, it's not so devastating. And here's why. You have already uh, made your mind up to say that mother loves me. You see the little things that she does cooking for you and so forth. So you're saying mother's just having a bad day. I'll just dismiss it. But not so for a young child. They're still searching. They're not sure who loves them. Now, for the sake of underscoring what might be a proper way to exercise parenting, we will go into the mind of a young child and extract something that they may be thinking about. And this might be it. When I try to do something that I like, my mother encourages me and gives me the confidence to believe I can do anything. And if I fail, I'll simply try again until I succeed. My mother's aware of which procedures and techniques that must be satisfied at various stages of growth. And such will elevate my intelligence and I'll keep my confidence forever. I'll always say, I know I can do this. My mother does not scream or hit me constantly or give me nasty looks when I do something that she doesn't like. When I think back, I remember I was frightened. And I didn't smile when I first came into this world. I had a hollow look. I was, I was just scared. And I'm surrounded by someone that I don't even know if it's a person or not. And I'm saying, oh my goodness, what kind of world have I come into? Am I going to be mistreated? But my mother started talking to me right away and smiling because she knew that I felt uncomfortable and she wanted to make me feel loved. So she was talking to me. Now she realized I didn't understand a word she was saying, but she also realized that I knew she was trying to communicate with me. And sooner or later, I would be able to communicate with her, but she was using words because she knew 
That's the only way I was going to learn and to be able to put uh, words into short sentences by hearing them from a doting mother. And I felt so comfortable. She made me feel that way. Now, when I was about 17 months, quite often I would cry because I wanted my mother's attention. But she didn't holler at me for crying. Rather, she smiled and she cuddled me and she kissed my stomach and stuck uh, my fingers in her mouth and so forth. And sometimes I would throw my bottle to the floor to see what happens. Or if she felt like playing with me, she would say, oh, something like this. Tasha, are you trying to see how far you can throw your bottle? I bet that's it. And I also would bet that you want Mother Kaylee to play with you. All right, come on, let's have some fun. Let's see how far you can throw your bottle. And I would throw it down numerous times. She'd pick it right up, never screaming or hollering at me. Now, mothers, if we move farther in Tasha's developmental uh, growth, we might hear something of this order. Tasha, you made an accident on the floor. Give me your hand. You and I can clean this accident up. Now, you shouldn't pour your drink on your toys. I gave this drink for you to put into your stomach. And she's pointing. And you poured all of this on your toys. I guess you wanted to see what would happen. Well, now consider that. No hollering, no screaming. Okay. Now, mothers, isn't this a great way to parent your child? Talking, constantly talking. And maybe this took place. Tasha, would you like to look at some picture books, uh, pictures rather? How about getting your storybook from your uh, toy box? And she goes on and on. And look at the fat white cat. Give me your finger so we can touch the little smiling brown puppy. See, don't be frightened, won't hurt you. Now let's compare and contrast the previous mother to another mother and we'll call her uh, Tracy. Now she loves her child too. Now keep in mind both mothers um, are faced with the same situation. They have uh, deplorable jobs, they're being despised on their job, no one, uh, really respects them. They have piles of bills and so forth. But Tracy comes home and she's tired and uh, her son Brandon wants to play with her. But she wants some part of it. So she put Brandon on the bed, stick a bottle in Brandon's mouth. Well, that doesn't go well with Brandon. He wants some attention. He wants his mother to say, I love you and to play with him. Well, he throws the bottle on the floor. Same thing as Tasha did, but this mother decided Throw it again, I'm going to spank you. She does. She hits his hand. And later, he starts crying. His feelings are hurt. And thus, he started crying more. Well, she's had it. So she goes and she gives him a good spanking and say, I told you to stop it. I'm going to teach you a lesson. But she doesn't teach him. She teaches him a lesson, but it isn't, I love you and to listen to me. That's not it. Now, we can prudently assume she loves her son, as we said before. And maybe she remembers her mother taking this degrading action with her as a young child. And it is safe to infer this. Tracy has no idea as a mother that she is blocking, preventing Brandon's path to quality intelligence. And most likely he will never regain this lost intelligence that should have taken place the first three years, but because of her hitting and spanking, he might be tarnished for life. Now, if we aren't certain uh, about the importance of praising and encouraging the child at a very young age, consider this. As you well know, mothers, when a young child is, say, 30 months, well, you put them on the floor, they start calling or drawing something of that nature, they bring it to you. You praise them. They start laughing. You're laughing. What do they do? Minutes later, they bring something else for you to uh, praise them. And it just keeps on. That tells you that people need confidence and they gain it by you encouraging them. It is true that from time to time, we all get a little upset. But that's okay. 
Just don't take it out on your offspring. But why spank or hit or scream at a child? Their reasoning is limited. They don't understand what they're doing. They're just eager to learn. And they just want to learn their way. Mothers, you must talk and talk and talk. That's the only way your offspring is going to learn anything by hearing things for you. And they're asking you things. And when they make a mess and they will, so to speak, you can't get upset and start screaming at them. Because our foundation of learning is more realized the first three years of development. Simply stated, we learn or we don't learn or we get encouragement or we don't and it's going to last a lifetime and if we don't get it, our intelligence will not be elevated. Now mothers, listen to this. Your education or economic status or your race will have little to do with you giving your child his or her intelligence that's going to last a lifetime during those first three years. Of course, you're going to keep going at it, but those are the most crucial years of development and know this much. By hitting and hollering and spanking and so forth, a at a, this particular age, your child will lose quality educational points. Serves no purpose. So, what are you going to do? Do you want to cement that negative things in the brain and it's going to stay there when they are adults? They will say, I, I'm stupid. I can't learn anything. And they don't even remember, but it's there subconsciously because you did it. Now, I would ask you to do this. Just spare the rod. Nobody ever learned anything from physical abuse. You have to talk to them. Of course, you hear people say, oh, I gave them a good whip and they never did it again. No, they probably wouldn't have done it if you had sat down and talked with them. I want to thank you so very much for listening to this presentation. And I want you to leave, leave me your uh, feedback so we can improve uh, what a mother can do to give uh, quality intelligence to her offspring. And I have some more videos on my YouTube channel, this channel right here, and it's correlated with how a disadvantaged mother can uh, give her, um, her offspring his or her intelligence for a lifetime. I didn't go into details here, but I do on the other videos. Like me on Facebook, Clifton Castile, or visit my internet website, which is cliftoncastile.com, and there you can see if I'm qualified to give this presentation, and you can download some of my articles for peer review. I want to thank you again, but remember this, no hidden or any other type of negative behaviors directed to your precious child.